Hi, welcome to Assisted Nursing Care Dabnet. As part of maternal and child nursing care, let me give you some information about hyperbilirubinemia. Hyperbilirubinemia is a condition when the levels of bilirubin in the blood is higher than normal, about 5 mg per dl in a full-term infant, and the normal values of unconjugated bilirubin is 0.2 to 1.4 mg per dl. Bilirubin is one of the breakdown products of the hemoglobin that results from red blood cell destruction. Jaundice as a pathognomonic feature of hyperbilirubinemia is the name given to a yellow appearance of the skin and white of the eyes or the sclera of an infant. It develops from the second or third day of life because the baby's liver is immature. Now what are the causes of jaundice? It, these are the physiologic jaundice, the breastfeeding jaundice, hemolytic jaundice, and jaundice related to inadequate liver function. Let us see it and discuss it briefly one by one. Physiologic jaundice is also known as icteric neonatorum. It is a normal response to the baby's limited ability to excrete bilirubin in the first days of life. The bilirubin increased from 10 to 14 mg per dl within 72 hours to 120 hours of life, which declines by the 7th to 10th day of life. Breast milk jaundice occurs because human breast milk has a substance known as pregnandiol that inhibits the production of glucuronyl transferase in the liver, thus increases the reabsorption of bilirubin through the intestinal tract in a process known as enterohepatic circulation. The hemolytic jaundice is a pathologic jaundice that occurs within 24 hours of life. It is due to red blood cell destruction and the total serum bilirubin level is more than 15 mg per dl for the full-term infants and more than 12 mg per dl for the preterm infants. This uh, occurrence or this condition persists for more than one week in full-term infants and about two weeks for the preterm infants. And the fourth one is the jaundice related to inadequate liver function which is due to infection or other factors. Now let us talk more about hemolytic jaundice. Let me give you a brief pathophysiology of hyperbilirubinemia due to red blood cell destruction which is uh, one of the causes of hemolytic jaundice. In the intrauterine life, oxygenation takes place in placenta and soon as the umbilical cord is cut, the baby takes his first breath. Many RBCs are destroyed in response to oxygenation that occurs now in the baby's lungs. When these red blood cells are destroyed, they release heme or hem and hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein which is being used by the body and so it is not a factor of jaundice. Heme is further breakdown into iron and photoporphyrin. And again, iron is being used by the body so it is not a factor of jaundice. It is the photoporphyrin which is furtherly conjugated into direct and uh, unconjugated bilirubin. Unfortunately, this indirect bilirubin is a fat soluble and cannot be excreted by the kidney but needed a well-functioning liver that produces an enzyme called glucuronyl transferase. When this glucuronyl transferase is combined with glucuronic acid, it will produce bilirubin glucuronide which is known as direct or conjugated bilirubin. This conjugated bilirubin is now water soluble and can be excreted into the bile and passes out through urine and stool. But unfortunately, the neonate still has a quite immature liver and so cannot cope with the production of glucuronyl transferase. Thus, the bilirubin will continue to increase. Aside from the immature liver, neonates have abundant unconjugated bilirubin in the intestine because of the relative lack of intestinal bacterial flora that can reduce bilirubin in 
a form that can be excreted through the canyon. So normally, even if the newborn becomes jaundice, he is able to maintain the balance between the red blood cell destruction and the utilization and excretion of its byproducts. And the problem occurs only when some newborns are premature, limited developmentally, and can be able or cannot be able to handle the byproducts of red blood cell destructions. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of hyperbilirubinemia? The infant may have decreased activity and hypotonia. The infant may become irritable with poor feeding and having a weight loss of about 5% within 24 hours. The infant may have fever or increased temperature, jaundice appearance, tremors, absent of moral and sucking reflexes, seizures, and high pitch cry, which is a symptom of kernicterus. As I have mentioned, jaundice is one of the pathognomonic features of hyperbilirubinemia. Now, what are the diagnostic studies that may confirm jaundice and hyperbilirubinemia? These are blood typing and RH factor in mother and infant. A Coombs test or direct Coombs test on poor blood, which is positive if antibodies are attached to the infant's red blood cell. And also a cold blood Coombs test or indirect Coombs test, which is positive if antibodies are present in the mother's blood in a series of total bilirubin levels test which is increased of more than which is having an increase of more than 0.5 mg per hour or 20 mg may indicate the risk of kernicterus. Now what are the complications of hyperbilirubinemia? These are bilirubin encephalopathy and kernicterus as you can see in the pictures. What is kernicterus? It is a condition in the newborn marked by severe neural symptoms associated with high level of bilirubin in the blood. And it is the bilirubin staining of the thalamus and basal ganglia that cause death of neurons or brain cells. Always remember that prematurity predisposes the preterm to develop kernicterus at low level of bilirubin. What are the signs and symptoms of this kernicterus? The patient or the infant may become lethargic, poor feeding, hypotonia which then turn into hypertonia causing opistotonus and spasticity. What are the interventions for hyperbilirubinemia? Phototherapy is the first one. This is the application of blue fluorescent light to the infant's exposed skin. And the exposure is based on the bilirubin levels, whether it can be given as a single, double, or double phototherapy. And according to the infant's age and according to the hospital policy. And the second intervention is the exchange blood transfusion to replace the baby's damaged blood with a fresh blood. Plan. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you are benefited from this lecture. Just keep visiting our website www.assistednursingcare.net and watch out for our upcoming related topics which is the care of infant during phototherapy. Thanks again for watching.